Hey class, I just wanted to talk a little bit about charting tips. So charting is a way that we can ensure good quality care is being done for our resident or for our patient if we're working in a hospital. When you do good quality care, you're passing on information that has happened to that person, good and bad, and so that can help give them the best optimal care. It is also a way that we help prevent ourselves from legalities. It's not that you can't get sued if you, um, even if you chart well, obviously, if you do something wrong, if you're, um, if you do something that is detrimental to the person's health, there's always that possibility you could get sued. But good charting will help um, keep you from charges of nursing negligence or malpractice if you're charting what you did it's kind of an old saying if you didn't if you didn't chart it you didn't do it um, and that can really hold true because when something goes to court if, if anything if you ever do anything and you end up having to go to court to justify it they're going to go back to that chart to that documentation and that's going to be that record that they're going to base off of whether they think you've done good care or not what you're telling them isn't going to matter it's really going to be what's in that chart and so they'll be asking you about things that are or aren't in that chart and you can say well i never got around to documenting that but i did it it's it's going to be nothing Okay, so you have to always make sure that good pertinent facts that we're documenting it well. So some basic rules with charting. We want to record facts, what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we touch, that objective data. Now, if we are going to chart subjective data, what the patient tells us, then we would put that in quotations. Okay, that should always go in quotations if you're just, you know, if you're charting exactly what they told you. Always a good idea to record information as closely to the time that you give care. Now, the way charting works nowadays is most facilities have gone over to electronic charting formats, and when you enter in and you, you uh, record an entry, it's automatically going to document the time. They always want you to document as close to giving care as possible, though sometimes that isn't always going to work. It's not always practical that you um, can stop and document after you do everything. But especially if something critical happens, if something detrimental to your patient happens, or if there's been some type of error or the patient fell, something that probably, you know, anything that happened that maybe shouldn't have happened, always make sure as soon as the patient is stabilized and their care is given that you document it while everything and all those details are fresh in your mind. Um, never document in advance. That can get you in so much trouble. I remember one time as a new nurse and I was working um, in this unit and they did these 24 hour flow sheets. This was before electronic charting and you would document basic care like you turned your patient, you did oral care, you would just do check marks or initial for those. And then there was a long style narrative notes for other events, other things that happened. And I remember um, I was working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And this nurse I was working with, it was midnight and we had a lull. And so she decided she was going to get caught up on her charting. And so while she was going through checking that she, she knew she was going to plant, turn her patient every two hours and do this every two hours. And so she just marked it all the way through for her entire 12 hour shift, even though it hadn't happened yet. But the patient died at three o'clock in the morning, but yet she's charted at four and at six that she still turned him and did oral care on him. You can see where you're going to lose a lot of, um, credibility there, right? So if that ever goes to court, to court because, you know, they decide something was done wrong, that nurse is not, they're going to, they're already going to be pegged a liar. Okay. So you never document in advance. You never know what's going to happen in your shift. Don't leave important information till the end. So again, if there's something really critical that's happened, make sure you document as soon as you can. We try to chart in a chronological order. So, you know, when you're documenting, you want to document in a, in a proper time sequence. Sometimes, though, you may find that you forgot something. And if you do forget something, that's okay. Um, you would just go ahead and you would document the, the um, date and time of when you remembered it. And you put that time in parentheses and you put late entry. And then you go ahead and document. We chart in... Um, we write on every line. You don't leave blank lines. So you don't want to leave blank lines where other people could try to go in and squeeze in information behind you. Um, always make sure you have the right chart. You will hear me say this so many times when we're at the facility. Always make sure you have the right patient. Always make sure you have the right chart. 
if you document in the wrong person's chart, you don't get to white it out, you don't get to take it out, you don't erase it, you don't put a black marker through it, you draw one line through it, put error and your initials, but everybody's going to be able to read whatever you wrote in that chart. So you always need to make sure you have the correct chart. If you remember an important um, point later that you forgot, like I said, just make a note, write late entry. So if it's out of chronological sequence or something, so they know it was just a late entry. You need to document often enough to tell the whole story. Now, I will tell you with documentation that some of the facilities uh, have different policies. So one hospital I wrote, I worked at, we were required to make some type of entry at least every two hours. So every two hours we had to document something in that chart. Then I came and I started working at another hospital when I first moved down here to Ventura and I was told um, they only do charting by exception. You did a head to toe assessment on your patient first thing in the morning and then you only documented if something changed from that assessment. But you know what, if you don't document anything else throughout the day, then they can say you never even looked at your patient. So I was always in such a, um, I was always in such a mindset to document every two hours that even when we went to charting by exception, I would do my assessment and at least once or twice more during my shift, I would make sure I documented something, even if it was something basic like patient resting, comfortable, no change in condition, just so they at least knew I looked at him. But that will be up to your facility's policy as to how often you're to document. Um, you, again, as far as writing legibly goes, it's one of the reasons why we have um, electronic charting now is so it is legible. You can type it in, there's spell check in them, and so it does make it much more legible. But if you do have to document old school where you're doing it on pen and paper, and some facilities actually still do that. And the other thing is, is even if you work somewhere that has electronic charting, sometimes the charting system goes down and you have to get back old paper and pen and chart long style. Um, you always want to make sure you write as legibly as you can just the the inferences is sloppy writing sloppy care and that may not be the case i'm the world's worst speller i when i'm in a hurry i write really sloppy it doesn't mean i give sloppy care but that's the inference sometimes that could be made if you have to go to court you want to make sure you eliminate bias from your notes so you don't label your patient as being drunk or being um difficult. You just, you be more specific and actually sh just document the behavior that you're seeing. Um, let's see what else here. Chart the time that you gave the patient care. So we always want to document the time of it. And as far as um, don't chart a symptom or a complaint without documenting what you did about it. So my clinical group has gotten so used to me saying this to them. Don't document that the patient didn't eat. If you document that they didn't eat, who did you tell about? Tell her that to. What did you do about it? If your patient complained of pain, what did you do about it? You never document that there's a problem without documenting what you did about that problem. And if you're documenting that you turned the problem over to nurse Nancy, okay, you document, I turn, you know, patient complaining of pain, um, nurse Nancy Smith notified at, you know, whatever time, and then your initial, we all usually always sign first initial, last name, and your title. So um, just keep that in mind. If you document that a person has a problem, but you don't document what you did about it, they're going to say you did nothing, and yet you knew there was an issue, and that can put you into a lot of liability issues right there. The other thing is, is if you do turn it over to another person, make sure you document who you turned it over to, not just I reported it to the nurse. What nurse? Because if it goes to court and they say, well, okay, well, what nurse did you report it to? Are you going to remember? It may be five years down the road before something goes to court. Okay, you can remember which nurse it was, and they'll 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 call up all the nurses who were on that duty and they'll say, well, she didn't tell me, she didn't tell me. So you always make sure you document who you told or who you turned the issue or problem over to. Don't alter a patient's record in any way. It is considered a criminal offense. This is a legal document. It's a legal document and you, all, all the healthcare team members who are gonna be participating in this person's care have a right to be in it. 
And then the other um, people that have the right is the patient. The patient can have a right to the, see their chart. So keep in mind, though, if the patient asks you to see his chart, you don't just get it and take it. You have to follow the facility's policy. Some facilities will make the patient sign out for it, and then they'll say, okay, you can get it within 24 hours, and they will copy it. And they may charge them the copying fee. Some people, some places will let them see the chart, but they'll have a nurse or a social worker sit down with them. Um, the, so they can't just take it or rip things out of it or alter it in any way. So you always have to follow your facility's policy on that. But the patient will does have a legal right to it. And they can share that with anybody they choose to, including their attorney, if necessary. Um... Don't use abbreviations that are not widely accepted. Now, every facility I've worked at has had an approved abbreviations list. And I have noticed that every every year, it seems like they take more and more abbreviations off the list because people use the abbreviations inc incorrectly. So do not use abbreviations that you think should be used. You have to use what's approved by your agency. Don't write imprecise descriptions. Mr. Smith is having a lot of pain. What does that mean? A lot of pain to you might mean a totally different thing than a lot of pain to me. It might mean something totally different to Mr. Smith. So always be more definitive. Put it on one of those pain scales with zero being no pain, 10 being the worst pain imaginable. Where would you rate it? And again, as I mentioned before, always make sure you have the right chart. So I have a couple examples here, and I thought we'd go over them, and you could tell me if you thought it was a good example or a bad example. So I have 0810. C slash O, that's complaints of a severe headache. Mary K R N notified. Now I don't leave blank spaces, so I put a line and then first initial, last name, and my title. Now, if you are a student CNA, you will be an SNA, will be your title. So is that a good entry? It's an acceptable entry. It's not a bad entry per se, but severe headache. What does that mean? A severe headache can mean, like I said, different things. So to be more precise, I should have put complaints of severe headache, pain scale, 9 out of 10, Mary K R N notified. That would have been a better entry. You want to, we don't document in full sentences or full paragraphs. You want to be as brief and concise as you possibly can. So you want to be brief and concise as possibly as you possibly can but yet still tell the whole story. So it's more of a bullet point type of format that we're doing this in. Um, so 920, is that a good way to write 920? And we'll have to say no, because we said military time should always be four digits, so it should be 0920. Back massage done, oral care completed, denies pain. First initial, last name, and title. Now, that's not a bad entry. Um, do I even need to write those things in? Is that something that uh, oral care could have just been on a 24-hour type of flow sheet? But you know what? Depending on your policy of your facility, how often you're supposed to document, if you didn't really have anything else critical to write, it's not. A, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that entry. You just don't want to be documenting a lot of unnecessary stuff. Yes, we need to tell the whole story. Yes, there's the old adage of if you didn't document it, you didn't do it. I get that. But at the same time, you don't want to have to be writing books on every one of your patients and not have time to actually give care. So here's one. It says 0920 asking for prune juice to have a bowel movement. BM's bowel movement given with breakfast. K Neal CNA. So they asked me for something for something specific. They asked me for prune juice because they need to have a bowel movement. I took care of it, so I documented that as well. Now, what's the results of that? Okay. Now, when a nurse gives a pain medication, if I was if if on that headache one, if I put complaints of a severe headache, pain scale nine, Mary K R N notified. Mary Kay would then document what she did about that headache, if she gave pain medication, what she did about that headache, and then she would follow up with getting the results. But since this person's asking me for prune juice to have a bowel movement, and I took care of it, so I documented that, now that they had something, so at 1030, had soft form BM, brown in color, no straining, that was my results of it. First initial, last name, title. Now, you, you might notice here, I did not put patient had a bowel movement. If I'm putting it in this patient's chart, I'm assuming it's about this patient. 
So I don't need to put resident states or patient. Well, actually, if I'm going to put it in quotations, I might put patient states and put that in quotations. But every sentence, I'm not going to put Mr. Smith is complaining of a severe headache. Complains of a severe headache. If it's in Mr. Smith's chart, it's about Mr. Smith. Okay. Or Mrs. Smith or whoever I'm documenting about. Um, so here's an entry, 1115, agitated and confused, calming measures tried but did not work, Mary Kay RN notified. Again, I had to go over to the next line. I don't want to leave blank spaces, so I draw a line through it. First initial, last name, and title. Now, that is not a bad entry, agitated and confused. All right, calming measures tried. Do I need to be more specific about what calming measures I tried? It's not really critical to their care. But what might have been even a better way to word this? Now, that's not a bad entry. That's really not a bad entry. But there is a way I could probably make it even a little more detailed. Now, the thing is, is again, is finding that line of, of how much detail do I need to add versus being as brief and concise as I possibly can. Um, you know, because like I said, you don't have time to write a book about each patient that you have. But here's a little bit, this is a little more specific, 1115, found trying to climb OOB out of bed without assistance, states, now I'm putting this in quotations because she's stating it, she has to walk her dog, thinks she is at home, resident reoriented to place and time, calming measures tried, Mary Kay RN notified, first initial, last name, and title. Now, that gives you a little bit better picture of what happened. Not that this first one was bad per se. This one was probably just a little bit more detail. You have a little bit clearer picture of what went on. One thing I'm going to say about charting is I could give these scenarios or I could give these charting sequences to 10 different nurses and it will be documented 10 different ways. Um, you're, you, what we're trying to teach you to do is to just try to find the, to be as accurate as you can to give as much detail as you can, but to also be brief. So 2 p.m. Now, of course, this would not be a good way to write 2 p.m., okay? Mr. Smith's son showed up drunk in his room. Security notified. First initial, last name, and title. Okay, one, the, t the time is written wrong. As we always do this in military time, four digits, no a.m., no p.m., no semicolons, um, just the four digits. Mr. Smith's son showed up drunk. Should, do I even need to document this in Mr. Smith's chart? It's not about Mr. Smith. This is about his son. So this would probably actually go on an incident report for the facility versus in the patient's chart. Now, if Mr. Smith's son showing up drunk and because of that, Mr. Smith is upset or he had an outburst or something happened because of it, then I might need to document it. But typically, I wouldn't be documenting about Mr. Smith's son and Mr. Smith's chart unless it impacted Mr. Smith in somehow. But I also called Mr. Smith's son drunk. Do I know he's drunk? Did I do a blood alcohol level? Did I do a breathalyzer test? How do I know he's drunk? Because there are other things that can mimic someone being stumbling around, being confused, slurred speech hypoglycemia from a diabetic, a stroke patient. You know, so we can't assume that he's drunk. I don't know that for sure. So a better way to write that would be 1400. Mr. Smith's son came to visit. He was talking loudly. His speech was slurred. He smelt strongly of alcohol and was stumbling. Security was called. K. Neal, and then I would have put my title on there. I'm documenting what I saw. I'm not labeling him as anything with this like I was on the other one. I'm just letting you know what I saw. Um, and then 2200 HS care done. HS care is care in the evening, bedtime care before bedtime. HS care done, small reddened area on right heel, Mary KRN notified. Couldn't get my name on there, so I had to come down to the next line. Drew a line, first initial, last name, and title. So I'm not going to document what Mary Kay did about that reddened ankle. That would be her job to document what she did about it. I'm document. You would document the things that you saw, the things you did, the things that you know that you have direct knowledge on. So um, let's see. I think we'll go ahead and stop there. And then I have some charting scenarios on um, your next link that you open. We'll have some charting scenarios, and you can. Um, Go ahead and download those and try to fill them out and then I'll go over them with you so we can just talk about maybe better different ways that it could be done.